Did you know that having a folic acid deficiency could be causing your hair loss? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at in this video, so stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair God YouTube channel. On this channel, we create science-backed YouTube videos just like this one on how you can combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. If you are new here, consider subscribing. So into the video on folic acid. Folic acid, or FA, also known as vitamin B9, folate, folacin, is one of the B vitamin complexes. Folic acid becomes a bioactive for the body when it is metabolized by the liver, which converts it into dihydrofolic acid. The body is not able to create folate, or vitamin B9, on its own, and it needs to receive FA via the diet. FA is found naturally in many foods such as spinach, avocado, cruciferous vegetables, beans, nuts, peas and bananas and so on. It is rare that a serious deficiency is found in the body, however, people often choose to take this vitamin as a supplement because the natural folic acid that occurs in food can be damaged by a high temperature when food is cooked. FA is also damaged by ultraviolet light and it is water soluble. Many people take vitamin B9 supplements to boost the growth and conditions of their hair, skin, nails, because the vitamin is required for the creation and repair of DNA, the coding of proteins and the synthesis of new cells and tissues. Vitamin B9 deficiency can compromise the health of the hair and skin and cause a number of conditions such as anemia, chronic diarrhea or more serious cognitive and neurological issues and even birth defects when a serious deficiency is maintained long term. Now a lack of folic acid in the diet is known to cause poor hair growth and even hair loss. To prevent hair loss it is recommended that a daily dose of 200 micrograms of folic acid uh, be consumed by women while men are able to tolerate a higher dose of 400 micrograms daily. There is no upper limit for vitamin B9 supplementation from food, however the upper daily limit for pharmaceutical FA supplementation is 1000 micrograms. It is also important that enough water is consumed along with the supplementation of this vitamin. How does folic acid deficiency affect hair growth? The effects of B9 deficiency are similar to that of iron deficiency and low ferritin levels. When FA is deficient in the body, the structure of red blood cells is affected and this structural change renders them unable to transport an adequate supply of oxygen and nutrients around the body. This can lead to anemia, but also hair loss, because healthy blood cells are required to transport the level of oxygen and nutrients that are required to produce ATP within the cells within the scalp. ATP is a nucleoside triphosphate that carries chemical energy around the cells and plays an important part in cell growth. When oxygen and nutrient levels are low, the cells will require another source of energy to produce ATP, which can result in an increase in the body's production of testosterone. In this process, testosterone becomes converted to dihydrotestosterone and this is a known cause to cause androgen related hair loss. Now there is a clinical trial that discusses the role of DHT in male pattern baldness, also known as androgenetic alopecia in mice, that I will link you to in the description. Low levels of folic acid in the body cause important cellular processes to decline, which slows down the rate of cell division and hinders the growth of new cells meaning that new hairs are not manufactured quickly enough to replace the hair strands that have broken or fallen out as a result of cell damage. Now, chronic deficiency of folic acid and ultimately leads to the death of the hair cells. Other important cells in the scalp are also affected by B9 deficiency, particularly oil secreting cells which play an important role in maintaining scalp health, as well as papilla cells which are involved in the production of new hairs and the regulation of the hair growth cycle. More information about the role of papilla cells in hair growth has been noted in a clinical journal which I'll also link for you in the description. A lack of FA can also be a factor that causes megoblastic anemia, which results in a premature greying of the hair due to the change caused within the red blood cells. PABA is a substance in folic acid that is sometimes taken as a supplement to reverse greying hair. So, let's say you start taking folic acid. How does it promote hair growth? Folic acid plays a vital role in the growth of cells and tissues of all types. 
not just the hair cells, but also cells within the nails, skin and internal organs. Folic acid is required for the division and regeneration of cells that are responsible for hair growth. Folic acid works in conjunction with other vitamins, including vitamin B12 and vitamin C to assist the body in the synthesis breakdown and metabolism of proteins. Hair is composed entirely of protein. Now when folic acid is metabolized by the liver, it becomes folate and numerous vital cellular pathways require the use of folate as it is a source of one carbon. Folate in this form is required for a number of critical uh, methylation processes in the body including the manufacture and maintenance of RNA, DNA and proteins, the building blocks within hair tissue. Folic acid is important for the healthy circulation of blood because it is used in the formation of red blood cells. When folic acid is at an adequate level, the blood cells are well formed and thus able to transport the required amount of nutrients and oxygen rich blood to the scalp which is used within the critical cell processes that improve the quantity and quality of hair growth. Let's have a look at some of the animal studies that have used folic acid in hair growth. Ontario Veterinary College, part of the University of Gulf, located in Canada, conducted a study into folic acid therapy to stimulate hair growth when they came across a male calf of three weeks old who has experienced gradual loss of hair, his hair along with brown patches on the skin and areas of crusting, which happens to be very similar symptoms of folic acid deficiency in humans. The veterinary practitioner gave one milligram per kilogram of the calf's weight of folic acid every day. By two weeks into the treatment, the crusty patches had disappeared and by two months, the calf began to regain a normal level of hair growth. It is a known fact among sheep farmers that the length and diameter of each strand of sheep hair is dependent on the quality of nutrients that is consumed by the animal. It has been noted that in particular, folic acid, vitamin B6, zinc and copper are of principal importance for the growth of healthy thick sheep hair. How have people been using folic acid for hair growth? Many people have embarked on a 100 day folic acid challenge where they have taken a daily folic acid supplement either alone or along with biotin, vitamin B12 or maybe even a fish supplement and they've documented their results via video on YouTube. Daniel Horsell took 100 folic acid tablets in 100 days and experienced 10 centimeters of overall hair growth as a result. I'll link her YouTube video for you in the description. Now, when Julia reached day 100 of her hair growth experiment, she also shared her experience in a video, which I'll link for you. Julia combined 800 micrograms of folic acid with 1,000 micrograms of biotin daily for 100 days and she experienced three inches of hair growth. So here's some general advice for folic supplementation. Some supplements of folic acid can aggravate the stomach lining, so therefore it is usually advised to take a folic acid supplement with food. It is advised that no more than one milligram or 1,000 micrograms of folic acid is taken daily. Often, it is advised for people experiencing hair loss to take vitamin B12 along with folic acid supplements, or at least have their levels of vitamin B12 regularly measured. This is usually advised as folic acid supplementation can conceal megaloblastic anemia, a symptom of vitamin B12 deficiency where the blood cells become disfigured, large and dysfunctional. Vitamin B12 deficiency can cause severe injury to the nervous system and folic acid cannot in itself resolve the neurological impairment created by B12 deficiency. Also, taking a single B vitamin supplement for a long period of time can sometimes cause the other vit B vitamins to become imbalanced in the body. This can be remedied by taking a B complex supplement along with folic acid supplementation. What about the possible interactions that folic acid could have with medicine? Supplements of folic acid may interact with some medications. It's important that you consult with your doctor before taking folic acid if you are present using any of the following. Tetracycline, and that's an antibiotic. Folic acid disturbs the metabolism of tetracycline and therefore reduces the absorption of this antibiotic in the body, uh, thereby lowering its effectiveness. This is true for all of the B-complex vitamins. Then phenytoin. Phenytoin, uh, this is an anti seizure treatment, also known as dilantin, which is affected by folic acid supplements. Taking folic acid along with uh, phenytoin can increase the risk of seizures. Apologies if for, apologies for I'm pronouncing these medications wrong, but pyrimethamine, uh, this medication, also known as daraprim, issued as a prevention treatment of malaria and as a treatment of toxoplasmosis, 
Folic acid can reduce the effectiveness of this medication. Also, chemotherapy medications. Uh, for patients who are currently taking chemotherapy, it is very important that they consult with their oncologist before they take any supplements because folic acid can increase the levels uh, of cabotabin and 5 uh, fluoracil to quite toxic levels within the body. There's also some medications that can decrease the body's absorption of folate. Uh, some medications lower the level of folic acid in the body, which may be a contributing factor to hair loss. And therefore, an appropriate folic acid supplement may need to be taken while these medications are being used, uh, because these medications can raise the body's requirement for folic acid. Now, it's really important to say that you should always consult with your doctor initially if you are currently taking medication and plan to add folic acid supplementation. Uh, with that being said, the following medications which can inhibit the body's absorption of folate. I'm not going to name them all because I don't know how to pronounce most of these words, but uh, you can just pause the video here and you can take a read through this if you are currently taking medication and you are thinking of using folic acid. So guys, that's what we want to share with you today on folic acid. Uh, don't forget that you need to really consult with a physician if you are, if you are considering taking this. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.